Um, and the NPR API, what is it? It um, is an application programming interface that allows you to use NPR content in your applications, whether they're web applications, iPhone, iPad applications, or Android applications for that matter. Um, NPR actually used its own API in developing its own iPhone or iPad applications. So it tells you how, how flexible it is and how powerful it is. Um, the NPR content that's available via the API includes <coughs> audio from most NPR programs dating to 1995, as well as text and all the images that are rights cleared for general use. The, not all images that appear on NPR.org are available via, via the API, and not all audio, but an awful lot is. Um, at least 250,000 stories are available and 5,000 different content aggregations. Um, the URL to memorize is www.npr.org slash API. It initially started with just stories, but in um, December um, added features like mix your own podcasts, a station finder API in case you have an application that needs a station finder feature. Um, and more content was launched, including Fresh Air, StoryCorps, and the most emailed stories. Um, and 2009, uh, July, the uh, Transcript API was launched, which uh, includes all transcripts from all NPR stories, um, and over 180,000 more MP3 files. And then in 2010, um, NPR launched the ingest feature, which enables um, content partners to send their content to NPR to be included in the NPR API's database. So anyone can use the API uh, for personal non-commercial use <coughs> or non-commercial use by a 501c3. Um, you can see the terms of the API terms, but basically anybody can use it. Um, we have, we, we've seen ver a lot of very interesting applications being developed around the API since it was launched. Um, the API website has a bunch of links to example applications. Um, it was developed <coughs> um, for NPR. Uh, as I said before, NPR is using it. They actually redesigned their website using the API recently as the source of all their content. Um, and stations like KQED and WBUR just launched a redesign that was based on the NPR API as well. I'll talk about that in a minute. The public, we really hoped that it would engage the community at large, the developer community, as well as the larger community, um, to become more involved with public media at, at, as a whole. Um, but as you'll see in the, in the sort of gallery, there's a bunch of existing widgets and tools uh, built already. So the API suite is composed of the full story API, as I said before, Station Finder Information API, Transcript API, and pretty much everything on NPR.org is available via the API. As I said before, there's some rights restrictions for images and, and, and content. Um, the content types include full text, full transcripts, audio images, and virtually all the other assets available. And the output formats supported are are very many, which is really handy for us. We have a bunch of um, different formats that we support here at KQED, and being able to use the API of both input and output methods um, in different formats has been very helpful. The primary one used by most people is NPRML, uh, NPR's custom XML format um, that describes their data, but they also support RSS, media RSS, and podcast RSS as well as JSON, Atom, and there are HTML and JavaScript widgets, which are probably the easiest way to incorporate the content in your applications and sites. So like most APIs, the NPR API um, works by sending a query to a specific URL, and it returns the data in, a, in the structured format that you choose. Let's get to an example. Um, so this is the, ex uh, the structure of the URL query ID, and then the API key, which you register for as part of the process at NPR. Anyone can get a key, and I encourage you all to do so. Um, the, the URL above re returns stories on Afghanistan, that's the ID, and you can see all the topics here at this URL. So let's see if this works. Oh, allow. Oh. Sorry, Safari doesn't have a great XML viewer, but 
that is XML. If we <laughs> let's see if I can view the source. So this is the structure. Um, the type ID at the top is, uh, this is actually the all topics interface, so this is a way that you can discover all the topics available via the API. And as you can see, there's a lot of topics. Um, and it includes <clears throat> not only the title, the ID, the number of stories available, but also the description of the topic at hand. So let's, let's go to the, the NPR API website so I can show you how you generate queries. This is a query generator, which you can uh, choose any of the topics or programs or bios or music artists. The music section is really, really extensive, by the way. If you have a, a music application you're thinking of developing, NPR's got amazing content. Um, and if you run it, you can see, again, the output XML format. And it's it's very well described. I mean, all of the features that, you, that you'll want um, supported in this API are supported. Um, let's see. And how do we use it? So KQD uses the NPR API to uh, find all the top uh, NPR stories and publish, we publish them to our news site and our homepage. We also have um, developed an alternative workflow which enables editors to choose which stories to publish. So we have two methods, depending on what content the editors want to publish and how. Um, we ingest the, the content directly into our database. There's no restriction on how you use the content once you've, once you've sucked it out of the API. So it's pretty powerful stuff. Um, <coughs> most stations so far have um, actually use the API to render immediately upon request, but we decided we would use it in our content management system so our editors could actually edit the content, add multimedia to the content. And um, <clears throat> these are the technical details about how we implemented the API. Um, we're a Java shop, so we developed uh, um, a method using JAXB, um, which is a popular interface for um, XML data to deserialize the NPR ML data and, and import it into our database using Hibernate, which is our object relational mapping layer we use. Um, as I said before, we have a very flexible workflow so that editors can choose exactly what schedule they want to publish data in and what and where it goes. <coughs> and all the stories, as I said before, are fully editable in our content management system, which we call simple CMS. Um, so this is an example of a story as it renders right now. We haven't yet incorporated uh, images or audio in our site, but that's coming soon. Um, and we're going to plan to do a, 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 a lot more with the API coming shortly, as I said. Uh, <coughs> the most recent development is the ingest method, as I said before. So right now only member stations are using this, but uh, there may be um, a future in which this is more open to everybody. Um, so we're currently publishing all of our uh, news-oriented WordPress blogs to the API via Media RSS. Um, so Climate Watch, Shifting Gears, and Capital Notes, all the data right now is going back to NPR as well. Um, as you can see, the NPR API is growing significantly. Um, when it started out, I don't know if you can see that, it's millions of requests. Um, so it's gotten up to over 50 million requests as of March of this year. And most people use NPRML as the output format. Um, and uh, I think I'm just about to the end, but um, I can take any quick questions. Ken Murphy developed our Java interfaces. We're happy to share them if you're also a Java consuming organization. Um, I am Kevin Cook, and that's me on Twitter. And I think we'd like to keep moving. okay, we're so so no questions. Okay, sure, I can take questions later then. All right, thank you.